your forecast first. Sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us late on your Friday night. An absolutely gorgeous end to the spring season as high pressure brought out that sunshine and the warmest day so far this week with temperatures into the mid to low 90s, and we are staying relatively dry throughout our night, but that is not going to be the case this time tomorrow. But the good news is for our night is temperatures are staying very mild still into the 70s across the board here. 75 in Champaign, 77 in Watsika, 76 in Pontiac and low 70s down south in Effingham. But these temperatures really aren't going to be falling that much more throughout our night. Going to be dropping into the upper 60s, so very mild, but lots of storms are in the forecast. I will have all the details on that coming up. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA 3 News. My fight is your fight, right? So when I celebrate for me or my people, is our, our celebration. Juneteenth is a day of celebration, but it's also the start of something else in one community. What project is set to start? Accusations keep coming against a Georgetown Ridge Farm coach, but others say none of it is true. A big part of Illini sports are the fans, and that could mean changes if they'll be back in Memorial Stadium this fall. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. We know about our history and we want more for us, for ourselves, and the community overall because we have to coexist together. June 19th, known as Juneteenth, is a time to recognize the official end of slavery in the U.S. Tonight, people came together in Champaign to honor the significance of this moment in history. Good evening, I'm Jessica Coons. Hundreds marched through the city streets chanting in celebration of Juneteenth. But many people say there's still a long way to go to achieve equality for all people in America and beyond. WCIA3's Jennifer Jensen has the story. <laughs> Juneteenth, a day to celebrate the final liberation of slaves in America. None of us are free if all of us are free. The Emancipation Proclamation went into effect in 1863. But slavery was still happening in Texas until two and a half years later on June 19, 1865, when the remaining slaves were freed. That December, slavery in the U.S. was formally abolished with the adoption of the 13th Amendment. While Juneteenth is recognized across the U.S., many in the black communities say they are still fighting for equity and justice. We are one people. If we are the same and we are Americans, then what works for you should work for me and my kids as well. Uh, we shouldn't be those people that fall victim to systematic racism and prejudices that we didn't ask for, that we was just, we was brought here. Right? And then for my community, I say it's time for us to stand up. Maurice Hayes helped to organize the Peace March through Champaign to celebrate Juneteenth. It signifies the unity of black culture, but also welcomed people of all races and backgrounds to join them and learn about the progress that's been made and the work that still needs to be done in our nation. The environment that we are coming up in that you don't understand because you're so distant from, and I mean the poorly funded schools, the lack of overall investment in our community, the lack of financial literacy in our community, the lack of the actual politicians acting on what our agendas is. Right? So if you and I never sat down and had a conversation, you would never be aware of that. This event leads into a new community building project starting next week in Champaign called the 4040 Initiative. We're going to go into all the High Hope areas, all the places where people say are the bad places or the places that need more attention. We're going to focus on those areas and we're going to introduce them to people and resources and opportunities that sometimes elude all of us. Hayes says this is a way to take initiative to make a much needed difference in people's lives. And that's going into the neighborhoods, right? Going back into the neighborhoods, doing block club parties, showing the kids that we love them, right? Educating them on police activity, how to be behave around officers, right? Uh, alerting them to what their rights are. That was Jennifer Jensen reporting. If you want to learn more about the 4040 initiative, we'll have information on WCIA.com. The Alkel Chimes at the U of I had its first concert since the pandemic started tonight.
They celebrated Juneteenth with Amplify Their Voices. It was a celebration of music from black, indigenous, and other people of color. We have a follow-up from yesterday. We told you a Georgetown Ridge Farm football coach and assistant principal is accused of racism and mistreating students. Now we're hearing from a student he used to coach, as well as someone who says these accusations are not true. Josh Cavanaugh was Marissa Goodwin's football coach back in 2011. She says she quit because of the way he treated her. He did not quite appreciate that I was on the team. Um, on more than one occasion, he told me that I should go try out for the cheerleading team because that's where girls belong. But I do know he did call one of the students. He nicknamed him um, either Oil Spill or Oil Slick. Others are painting a much different picture of this. One parent says she feels these accusations are completely false and says her daughter only has good things to say about him. He is a positive person for my child and helps her because there's absolutely no reason to take his job, his livelihood, for somebody that we don't know the 100%. The school board will be meeting tomorrow night to discuss Kavanaugh's resignation from his coaching role. It is the only item on their agenda. We reached out to superintendent about what that resignation will mean for his other role as assistant principal at the junior high. We have not heard back. New for you tonight, a man is in custody for a deadly shooting in Springfield. Police and U.S. Marshals arrested 36-year-old Eugene Jackson. He's charged with the murder for of Tykeem King. Police say he shot him last Sunday. A Charleston man is behind bars for sexually assaulting a teenager. Michael Howlett Jr. is accused of assaulting a 16-year-old. He was arrested at a hotel after a two-month-long investigation. He's also accused of threatening a police officer. The former executive director of a rental nursing home is facing felony charges. Police say she stole more than 20,000 from the facility. It happened at the Villas of Hollybrook. Kimberly Cross made her first court appearance today. She is charged with participating in a continuing financial crime enterprise and forgery. Officers found checks written to the Villas had been either altered, cashed, or deposited into an account other than the business account. She could face up to 30 years in prison. Decatur Park Police are investigating after a bench at a 9-11 memorial was vandalized in Nelson Park. They say the bench was found in the lake yesterday. Officers were able to get the bench out and reinstall it. The memorial itself was not damaged. One person was sent to the hospital after an accident in southeast Champaign County. It happened on County Road 2125 East north of Sydney. A car and a truck were going the same direction. Police say the truck tried to pass but ended up sideswiping and overturning twice off the road. The driver of the truck was seriously hurt. This just in, police and Fisher say a three-foot-long Nile monitor lizard has escaped from someone's home. They say it seems to be around the Shepherd Mobile Estates area and does not appear to be vicious. They are asking people to keep a close eye on small children and keep small pets away inside. If you see the animal, you should call the number that is up on your screen right now. The state announced 692 new cases of coronavirus today. There have been more than 135,000 cases. Of everyone who's been tested in Illinois this week, only 3% returned positive. 44 more people have died in Illinois. The death toll in the state is nearly 6,600. People on the front lines fighting against COVID-19 got some new benefits. The state agreed to boost income for days worked during the pandemic. But that's not all. These new provisions help all nurses who work for state-run facilities. We had a lot of um, safety issues that we wanted to discuss, and um, we were trying to open up communications and maintain regular communications so that we can address issues related to personal protective equipment, um, testing, uh, screenings. The Illinois Nurses Association negotiated the deal with the state. It includes a 12% pay raise for those who worked between April 16th and June 30th. Manufacturers are teaming up with a congressman to make sure workers are safe. John Deere made more than 400,000 face shields for first responders, healthcare workers, and veterans home workers. Today, the Il Illinois Manufacturers Association and Congressman Rodney Davis gave out around 600 of those shields to emergency operators, church organizations, and 
senior living centers in both Taylorville and Springfield. A salon in Champaign is being recognized for its safety protocols during the pandemic. Rod Sickler Salon and Spa won the Best Practices Award from SafeWorks Illinois. Medical Director Dr. Fletcher presented the award. He says he chose Sickler's business because of its efforts to protect customers. Sickler has added a lot of safety measures, including UV lights to sanitize chairs, checking temperatures when clients come in, and having 12 stations used at one time instead of 25. I want someone to feel like we are the safest place in Champaign County that you can go into as a business. Uh, not only did we take extra COVID trainings through here as a staff, we uh, took a month. I brought my staff back to work before we opened a month before and we, we did intense trainings. This award will be given monthly to a workplace in central Illinois. They'll be judged based on operating procedures during the pandemic. Many took up gardening when the pandemic hit, but one garden was shut down because of COVID-19. Not anymore. Plus, kids can rejoice in one town. We'll tell you what's back open. And later, the land of Lincoln is becoming a second home to some athletes from the Sunshine State who's committed to play for the Illini.